Hello and welcome to the South Dallas Sports Show. I'm your host, Richie Leahy, here with my co-host, Matty B. And another off-season show coming in. I will say I'm not going to talk about college football video game, but people are fired up about it, dude. Getting all kind of comments about like my take. I guess people just hate Microsoft and Xbox. Like, I don't care. No, actually, I hate sent people. People say like, "Oh, I don't care," or "I couldn't care less," because it makes you sound like an idiot. But it doesn't matter if you want to play. Like people are saying that I'm wrong on the PlayStation. They have a thing like Game Pass where you can pay twenty bucks a month or something to play their games for free. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. I don't want to pay for online at all. I already pay for the internet. I don't want to pay an extra fee to play Call of Football online. That's the entire reason why I wanted them to put it on computer. Because they put it on computer, I don't have to pay Xbox. I don't have to pay PlayStation. It doesn't matter if I want to play online with people. So that, that's my whole beef. So you can throw hate at me. I really, it doesn't matter. And say what you want, but the Xbox Game Pass thing does have better games. And I think that's a fact. Plus, I didn't even mention they have like Doom now, Wolfenstein, uh, the Fallout stuff, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls. So there's a lot there. But if you want to keep the engagements flowing, my inbox is open. So thank you. Uh, we had, did have some great engagement. And a lot of people have been listening, probably to get hyped up for the game. They did release a trailer and some gameplay. Maybe I'll be wrong. I didn't really see a lot of the menu system stuff, which kind of scared me. Because it seemed like they were just giving people a demo. And I had warned that maybe there will be a bunch of like crappy online, hey, you should buy this pack of card. You have to go through three screens before you can play a game. But that's all I'll say. I want to see more. Um, for the show, though, another off-topic, non-football thing. Uh, actually, we, there was a football thing. McCaffrey got his contract for only two years. And people are celebrating like it's a win for running backs. I wouldn't be signing a running back for more than two years, would you, Matt? No. I mean, I don't know why that would be a win. Like, oh yeah, he got a lot of money. It's like, yeah, but they're basically saying that he might only have two more good years. And they don't want to pay for that. And I agree. Why would anyone waste money on him when he can get, he gets injured all the time? He might not be injured with the 49ers because he could have been faking it before with the Panthers. But I've watched him hobble around multiple games, multiple fantasy seasons. There's one guy that I would never draft high, and it's him. Because you don't know what you're going to get. People had that. Then they, it happened last year. Near the end of the season, he started to get hurt. Oh, I'm hurt a little bit. And people were like, hey, my team's winning when McCaffrey plays. I'm like, yeah. You live and die by, by the McCaffrey. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. Why, why are you doing that to yourself? Um, so that doesn't do anything. The other thing that annoys me that's not going to do anything are the Steelers working out a deal with the 49ers. Everyone keeps talking about how it's inevitable, how they're either going to get Ayuk or Debo Samuel. And the entire time I'm thinking, why? Like, what is the purpose of this? It's not going to solve the offensive identity issues, bringing in another receiver. And then people were saying that he Ayuk would be a two behind Pickens. Why? I would think Ayuk would be the one. Is Pickens really better than him? He hasn't done shit. He's been in a couple Super Bowls, man. <laughs> right? I think he's been there for both of the Niners' runs. Maybe I'm wrong. But, like, when one guy's actually producing and winning, that's the, that's the guy. You're bringing him in as a one. You're not bringing him in as, like, a backup. They're not bringing in Debo Samuel to back up Najee Harris. Right? Or whomever he's going to replace. <laughs> So give me a break with all that stuff where it's like, oh, the Steelers just need another uh, journeyman. And then it would be awesome if they got Ayuk. It's like, he's not a journeyman. Like, I don't know what you guys are thinking, you Pittsburgh guys. Well, it, the, it, it, it drives me crazy to see what, what people are, are thinking would be a legitimate trade. Because 
like if you're following like the Madden fantasy trader, like it's like I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give the Niners a cardboard box and a conditional six round pick. They'll definitely take that. Like, you, if you're getting what's going to be considered a, a value player, like you're not just gonna, they're not the Niners aren't giving it away for a song. I mean, I, I think there's a little bit of leverage on their on their side because they they're not willing to pay the higher contract. So I mean that could be something with the extra cap space that Pittsburgh has that they could possibly absorb more in a longer term contract, but I think it's to be seen to how much are you going to invest in that. So that's where it kind of comes in. So the McCaffrey thing actually goes through 2027, so what is uh, three or four seasons they're giving them? Um, the the reason behind the Niners making a deal for cheap is probably to get out from underneath some of these other contracts or try to get something in return when for a guy that they're going to lose. But going all in on like McCaffrey and I don't even know who else they have on that offense. Like the offense just seems like. I don't think they're going to. Maybe they could just plug and play whomever they get in the draft and kind of just take it out. But it seemed like the the time for the Niners to win was last year. Maybe the year before. Yeah. And it hasn't happened. So, like, they're not going to keep building up. And then five years later, it's like, yeah, they finally reached the mountaintop. Like, they're going to be passed up by another team here soon. And that's going to be it. And then they're going to have to either rebuild or do they do they go with Purdy? Like, is he able to keep it going? I, I don't think they're going to be able to continue on, like, a Tom Brady-type run where it's like... I mean, even they had down years with Tom Brady, but, like, they were consistently winning 10 games for, whatever, two decades, almost the Patriots. Um, except for the couple years where he got banged up, maybe. I don't think Well, Purdy I'm glad you that brought guy. that up. Tom Brady. Because I kind of felt like the... I felt like the same the same brainwave where there were a lot of pieces that went in and out of that new England offense. But if you have the consistency with quarterback play, some of those other guys, you can kind of rotate in and out and make do. And I kind of feel like that's in that same mold. Look at what Kansas city's done. Um, where different pieces are rotated out. Like it was supposed to be such a big deal that Tyreek Hill left for Miami and they still just moved right along with the next set of receivers. So, I mean, I think there's something to be said that if you have that consistent coaching in place, you can, you can adjust and accommodate for the personnel that's around you and knowing how to maximize that talent. So, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily write off the Niners, but, I think they need to have the other pieces in play to to continue to be front runners. Well, see, that's the thing with the Steelers right now that I know, to me, just makes me think that the fan base is kind of delusional because I saw it firsthand with the Packers last year. They, all, like, they should have beat the 49ers and possibly been in the Super Bowl with a cast of rookie random wide receivers and Jordan Love. Like, that offense was running. It wasn't because, like, oh, they have Jordan Love. Now they need to get, like, they need to bring in a big-time receiver to, like, make it click. It's like, nah. It just worked with the guys because the quarterback wasn't making bad decisions until he threw that interception that cost them the game at the end. While they were going down, the, I can't remember if they were going to tie it or have a chance to win. And the Steelers are like, no, you know what we need? We need a superstar wide receiver randomly because none of these other teams have one that are winning, <laughs> right? Like, I know they're trying to bring in a guy from the Niners and you could argue that, well, the guy, he won with the Niners, you're saying. It's like, yeah, but they have, they're built, they're built because they have so many great guys right now as a team. Picking one guy off that tree doesn't save your team. Like, when's the last time a guy brought in a big-time receiver and then they made a run to the Super Bowl? 
Was it like Terrell Owens and Donald McNabb? Was he even there the first year? Like uh, Randy Moss going to Patriots? Well, that Randy Moss team, they went undefeated. Yeah, and they lost. <laughs> Terrell Owens, McNabb. Not enough chunky soup. They lost. Like, I can't think of a team that brought in a receiver and won the Super Bowl, which is the ultimate goal. As, like, we got the missing piece. It's a receiver. That's never been the case. Unless you, unless you can prove me wrong, I'll probably get so much hate mail for this. Every time the Steelers, it's like they miss A.B. He's bankrupt now. They can bring him in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know, like, what the point of is having, uh, like, another... I know Ayuk's not really a, a diva, and a lot of people are joking because he looks like Mike Tomlin, so that might be where a lot of the hype comes. He's, like, playing for his dad. <laughs> but I, I don't know. It's like they they held hostage by Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell, and they're like, we need to get that back. We need some superstars on this team, baby. And they're turning into the Pirates. I brought it up a couple weeks ago, and I'm feeling like Pittsburgh's like, you know what? We don't need to win anymore. We just need to have superstars so we can sell our merch. And that brings me into my next topic, the WNBA with Caitlin Clark, which I thought we'd never talk about probably again. And as I'm watching Steelers fans beg for a superstar, the WNBA has a superstar and they're not protecting her. It's insane watching her just get blindsidedly attacked on the court. They don't review it. Like she's like taking shots and getting injured. And she's like, <laughs> she's been playing for like a month. And, and everyone in the media, they're just lying about it. They're saying like the WNBA, this is proven that the WNBA is like a tough league. Bro, what are you talking about? Could you imagine if LeBron came into the league, whenever that was, he was so hyped up. Players could have beat the crap out of him. They didn't. The refs gave him a ton of leeway. If you remember, that's kind of like where the LeBron flopping stuff came from. Because he was always getting calls. Caitlin Clark is not getting any calls. Which is insane <laughs> because she's the moneymaker. So it's like everything that the NBA was doing where they're like, we got to protect the superstars at all cost. The WNBA has exactly one superstar. One star that took the Iowa Hawkeyes to the top of college basketball. Almost won a national championship that I don't think they've ever had before in women's basketball. Had 17 million people watching their game. No one else is bringing in those eyeballs, as you can tell from the other WNBA TV attendance or TV, like whatever ratings. They're not high. So the fact that even in the WNBA, a couple of her games, I think, were like at 2 million people, and then people are tuning out, that's because they don't want to tune in to watch like a snuff film of her just beat, getting the crap beat out of her. <laughs> Like, it's, it's insane to me that they're just not able to put together. And I know her team sucks, and they keep losing. And so every day on the front of ESPN, it's like, lose again, Caitlin Clark. Eventually, people are just going to be like, all right, well, she's good. She's putting up decent numbers. I think she was like rookie of the month or whatever through the first month. It's like, of course, she's going to get her points. They're not going to compete this year. And the way that they're treating her, I'm not saying to give her all the 50-50 the calls or whatever, but protect her. Very easily, getting hit from behind could have been injured. Very easily could have been injured from that, right? Could have been injured on a couple other plays where I saw people just coming up. And some people were like showing her push people down uh, in college and people flopping. They're trying to get a call. There's two different things when someone's yelling at you and just attacking you. And then the player's saying like, oh, I always play like that. It's like, okay, so you're basically dirty. If you, you want to play dirty and then someone had highlights of her blindsiding other people. It's like, all right, well, at some point then the refs need to step in. Because now 
Caitlin Clark's getting so many eyeballs where in, in the past they could have be uh, fouling each other in between plays. I don't know. It's not like I'm watching, right? But because I, I try to pay attention to sports and what's trending, I see tons of Caitlin Clark highlights. And I'll, I'll also add in, I hate the WNBA courts. Why? <laughs> Why did you like, it's like an Oregon thing, right? Don't they have the shiny courts? It's like, how can we make this distracting? We're going to have a bright ball. It's like white and orange. And sometimes it's like, it might be different colors. I don't know. And we're going to shine the court so that it's so hard to watch on TV. Like we want to make this the worst possible TV viewing of all time. And the guy's like, I got it. Let's get some reflection <laughs> on this cord going. We'll throw some different colors in. So you really can't see some of like the, the three point lines and stuff. And I'm, I'm looking at some of the highlights and it's like, who's watching this on TV? Obviously no one, because I would turn that off in two seconds. Like when the Oregon plays in basketball, their court is so awful that I just turn it off. It's kind of like I would possibly say, cause I kind of like Boise state's blue field. But it's like that, but it would be like if they had, instead of having the blue field, they just made their their turf uh, safety green or something that's so, so blinding that they're like, we want attention. What's the brightest color? Like a safety green. That's a, almost like grass is green. Perfect. And they would make the field that. That's what I'm like watching WNBA where the court is just reflecting and all you see is like just bright flares. There's no need for that. There's absolutely no need to have that. You already have an established NBA court. And I know they're trying to like what distance themselves. They'll happily take the money from the NBA to keep their league afloat. Happily take that, Matt. But yet they want to do things different. And it's like, why? I did give Caitlin Clark some credit though, because she called the entire league out and was like I made more. I make more money in college than a lot of these people have in their careers. <laughs> I was like, w- w- way to just m- enlarge that target that's already on your back. Well, that's why they're just jealous. I mean, it's kind of weird, but it, it's like you see it in other professions too, where it's like, uh, hey, you watch like a crime show. It's like two lawyers killing each other, and it's like, oh yeah, even like going all the way back, like didn't Alexander Hamilton like die in a duel? Because the banking system or something stupid. So it's like, all right. Yeah, they're just jealous of your success. We get it. You're flaunting it. And you're actually playing decent. Your team sucks. So, but I mean, I guess if they're getting the number one pick, they knew their team sucked. Like, it's not a surprise. And so I I just don't know how they're going to save it. Now, they're doing that big three league. They are going to go through with that. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to pay more than, than than the WNBA, but they're going to put it on during NFL and college football playoffs? Worst decision I've ever heard. It's like, hey, we need more eyeballs. What's the most popular sporting thing? We're <laughs> going to put it up against that. The NFL playoffs. Oh, perfect. That's like what we're going to go with. Because <laughs> right now, the women's Olympic team. So how does that work? Does Caitlin have a chance to play in that? Do you know? Isn't it Summer Olympics this year? I want to say yes. I think it is too. So, did they already pick teams? Is she going to get to play? I, I wonder. But, who knows? That would be another thing too. Because remember, the, what, the Dream Team? That kind of brought a lot of those NBA personalities together. That hated each other. And then now you have the buddy buddy. It took them a couple couple times of losing in the Olympics for the NBA players to all be friends. Now they band together. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Celtics made it back to the finals. They're playing the Mavs, and as everyone knows, I'm kind of a casual NBA fan. That's it. I don't really watch the regular season, but I do cheer for the Celtics. And I will say, I don't care what anyone says. They have to win it this year. I actually had a highlight, you know, like social media that like give you a highlight. I think it was like my Snapchat or something. Like I was like 
whatever, how many years ago you're watching the same dudes from the Celtics play in the finals, Jalen Brown and, and Tatum. And or, yeah, Brown and Tatum were there. <laughs> and I'm like, I was trying to think. And maybe even Horford was there too. So it's like, bro, you have the same exact team. That was like how many years ago? You need to win this year. You can't just keep floating around. This is a perfect year. The Mavs are like a five seed, I think. Only two seeds. We talked about this a couple years ago because I thought the Celtics are going to have a chance to to maybe make a run or something. Uh, or maybe it was the Heat. Were they like a very low seed last year or the year before? But only two teams have ever won with a, a seed lower than the top one of the top seeds and it was like uh the elijah one team maybe in the 90s and then like some celtics team in the 60s it's like all right you have to be a top seed so basically celtics had the best record by far in the nba they should just beat the mavs in like five and i see the prediction in the opposite where it's like <laughs> it's like mavs mavs in five mavs in, in four they might sweep the celtics and i'm like what are you guys talking about? This is a five seed Mavs team. Maybe they had dudes out. Maybe because uh, Kyrie Irving's there and LeBron is missing him. Did you see that? LeBron's like putting out feelers. Like I really miss Kyrie Irving. I miss him. I did see an article about that. That was kind of crazy. That is, he was just like, trying to push to get him traded and then Kyrie got pissed and was like um I don't need this nonsense yeah LeBron pushed him away and now now that he's back in the finals and LeBron's not there LeBron's like damn I miss him it's like you break up with your girlfriend and then you see remember her like, when we were friends she marries like some millionaire and you're like damn I, I couldn't be the millionaire guy in her life but she shouldn't be doing better than me what the hell <laughs> <laughs> That's like that's like what he's look, doing right now, and he's holding L.A. hostage to try to draft his his son, which is weird. It's like a nepotism type thing, and now the NBA draft's going to be two days. No one's watching two days of the NBA draft. Most people, because they do a lot of international, most people don't even know half the guys that are drafted. It's not like the NFL, where there's a bunch of colleges and like real time rivalries and there's like years of watching the guys a lot of the nba draft guys are like what straight out of high school now or one and dons people don't know these guys a lot of them like a casual fan does not know people in the nba draft that's why brawny is getting a lot of the press even though he what averaged five points or something at usc like he wasn't even near the top pick if someone picks him near the top it's because of his dad maybe it works out I mean, honestly, you have to kind of take that gamble because, um, like, do you, do you know what's going to work out? If you pass on him because of his name and then he hits it out of the park, then what? Because even uh, Hardaway Jr. played at Michigan and I think he fell a little bit in the draft. He's on the Mavs team right now in the finals. Still around. Like, you have to know, like, some of these dudes that grew up around the NBA, they have to know the work ethic, right? Same with, like, Marvin Harrison Jr. in the NFL. Like, the guys that grew up around the game, Larry Fitzgerald, they always talked about it. He was, like, the ball boy. Those dudes know how to put in the work. Maybe not all the time you'll get some, but if, if there's a chance where it's, like, dad, kid working hard because everyone thinks he sucks... <laughs> you might just have um, a, what, Ken Griffey Jr. situation where the son's better than the dad, and do you want that? Like, I have a hard time believing that LeBron's going to be passed up by his son just because he's played forever and has been very successful. If Caitlin Clark had came in and been a LeBron, because LeBron basically won wherever he's gone, and he's kind of the key reason. He realized early that he needs guys around him, though. That's what Caitlin Clark needs now. She has no friends, though, in the league, it looks like. But if she would be able to pull together like a big three like LeBron did and then leverage that into a couple of championships, then I don't think there will be any doubt. That's, that's what's going to be the difference. Is she able to pull together 
a supporting cast like LeBron was able to do. Because he didn't win until he did that, remember? Yeah. Had all his friends come out, and then they bragged about winning six championships, and that never happened. And then people made fun of him, and now he's, like, chasing that high again of, like, I need to find new friends. And then whenever his friends break up with him, like Kyrie Irving, then he's, like, depressed about it. So, um, I do have one other thing. I I was going to put this on the agenda, and I forgot. But did you see people have been arguing about the better athletes between the NBA and the NFL? And uh, I saw a lot of polls where they think the NBA guys are far and wide better athletes than F- NFL players. Do you agree? No. I don't either. I don't think it's close either. Because, like, the NBA guys, you have to be tall. Like, it's almost like a meme at this point where, like, if you go out the grocery store and there's, like, a guy... That's like super tall. Because I know my brother's like that. Everyone asks, did you play basketball? Hey, you're tall. You should <laughs> play basketball. And it has to be annoying, right? Could you imagine? You're like, no, I, uh, I'm i just a computer programmer. But it's your height, at your height, you know, you could have played basketball. It's, it's like, no, I'm not athletic at all. Yeah, but you're tall. And so, like, I think people would just think. That because these guys are big, that they're athletic. Yeah. But like, I don't really think LeBron could come in to the NFL and be as impactful as what people assume he would be. Right? Because you get athletes like, uh, and the reason this kind of stuck in my brain, I think that one of the Minnesota, I think it's Minnesota, one of their like big time wrestlers got a contract coming in. They're going to try to make him a D tackle with a, uh, I can't remember what the team, maybe the Ravens or the Bills or something. And people were like pumped up and I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of athlete you need. An all arounder, like in a defensive tackle to come in, you have to be able to, you know, hand fight. And like a guy that's wrestling is able to do that. The NBA guys, that's it. NBA is not physical. I, you can argue against me all day, but those dudes are flopping. And some of them can barely move, right? Have you watched some of those big guys lanking down the court <laughs> and like lumber down? They pick like some of these fast guys like Russell Westbrook. I saw his name come up a bunch of times. I didn't even realize he was still in the league, to be honest. But they're like, yeah, he could be a, he would probably be awesome because he can like run around and throw the ball. It's like there are a lot of guys that are like Kyler Murray out there, but like I don't remember a lot of NBA guys like Russell Wils- Westbrook included that were also getting major league baseball contracts. Like Kyler Murray, he was wanted for his throwing. Russell Wilson wanted by major league baseball for his throwing. Like you can't just take an NBA guy that's a point guard and say, well, he'd be a great quarterback. He'd be unstoppable because you have to be able to throw the ball. Otherwise you just have like another Denard. When the NFL didn't really have a position and then what? So I don't, I, I don't know the 40 times of these guys. Someone put up like the verticals where the NBA guys, like only one guy in the NBA had like an over 42 um, inch vertical and like six dudes at the combine hit that this year for the N- NFL. And I'm like, yeah, these guys have to be able to jump because they're smaller. The NBA guys can dunk without jumping because they're already like 10 foot tall. It's like me playing on a little tyke's hoop. Do I really need? <laughs> do I really need to jump to slam it? That's why it's, it's always crazy to me when people are like, like the most annoying thing is going to a friend's house and then be like, "Bro, you want to watch slam dunk highlights?" Like, no, I do not. Like, I don't care. I, I saw someone posted um, in return like a major league baseball slam dunk version where it was like the best athletes from baseball, like Barry Bonds. This is like from the nineties. Barry Bonds and like Ken Griffey Jr. and a bunch of them were like slamming the ball down. And I'm like, yeah, these are guys that can still dunk and they're six foot tall. Like, remember like T.O.? He was going to all the celeb basketball games and he was like showing out. It's like T.O. is ripped. He's shredded. He's an actual athlete. He can play with these dudes. He's just only six foot three. Right? He's not six foot ten. Otherwise, he'd be in the NBA and he could dominate because they couldn't stop him. They can't cover him in college. And then people kept saying... 
Um, remember Draymond Green played. He tried to play football at Michigan State. He's been a pretty productive NBA player. He couldn't even get off the line against a 5'11 guy in the Michigan Spring Football game, Michigan State Spring Football game. People were showing his highlights. It was him just getting jammed up by these small dudes. He couldn't get off the ball. So if one of the big time stars, Draymond Green, he's even in commercials everywhere now. I don't get it. If he can't perform in a Michigan State spring game, that's college, bro. You think he just magically can go play for uh, the Niners? There's no way now. <laughs> There's no way in hell that some of these guys can just make the flip. Ooh, for every I, think, I think the best argument made was that when you look at the NBA and how the players are used as far as their load management and things like that, like NFL training camp would absolutely destroy some of those guys. They're not even like, I don't think they know that like the running and the hitting, a lot of those guys are limping after just getting bumped. Like yeah. You have you to have like a Antonio Gates played basketball and that, that transition was, was good for him to the NFL. See, I, I've noticed a couple of that because remember uh, the guy that played with my brother um, that got drafted, uh, Adam Shaheen. I can't think of his last name. Uh, went to the end up with the Bears, and uh, he played for a while. But I think you have a basketball player that's on kind of on the shorter side and that's successful in basketball because of their athleticism. I think those are the guys, and Antonio Gate fits that mold. He's not super tall, right? Was Tony Gonzalez a guy too? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he didn't play basketball. But I think some of those guys that like do make the jump, they're shorter, explosive basketball players. They're not like these six foot eight LeBrons. They really wouldn't have a the leverage to win um, hand to hand type fights off the line. And I mean, I've seen I play just playing football, and then even just doing. Um, intramurals with athletes from other sports. I noticed that one thing in college, like whenever you could tell when an athlete either wrestled or did whatever, whenever you're doing like some of the intramural type stuff, even like um, some of the flag football and you have to, like if you're blocking, you can tell when someone has that kind of training. And the guys that don't, their balance is very bad. Because I played against some of like the basketball players. So like I know that if they're struggling in flag football, and these are dudes that could probably dunk and and shoot hoops around me, like no nobody's business, but like they can't stop you in football and flag football and intramurals, like you can't tell me that the NBA guys are going to be that much better than actual NFL guys because like I didn't even play college football, so like there's a different skill set that you have to learn. And saying like, oh, so-and-so is like an a- athlete, whatever. I don't see NBA guys also running track and breaking records. Like you hear about NFL guys doing, right? Some of those guys in college actually do run track and like do athletic type stuff. You never hear about like, oh, so-and-so from the NBA. He's also running the 100 meter at, at college. Like, no, they, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because, <laughs> like, they, they talk about, like, hey, these guys are great athletes. It's like, all right, well, then why aren't more of them doing Olympic dual sport type stuff? You hear about, like, I know a couple of Michigan guys have played football and baseball or, like, football and basketball. But it's never like the basketball guys are also playing baseball or also running track. It's usually the football guy is doing the other sport, not the other way around. That, that's where that's where I think um, that some of the stuff that people talk about, a lot of them are just kind of um, like myths or whatever. Because uh, some of the 40-yard dash times you hear, like, there's rumors that, like, Roy Williams said that Michael Jordan could run a 4.3 40-yard dash. I doubt it. The guy got cut from his high school team, Right? It wasn't like he was like a super supreme athlete. You're not getting cut from high school if you're a freak athlete. The coach will find you. He would make you into a Dennis Rodman before Dennis Rodman. 
he would have used you just to put you out there and said, you're going to be our defensive guy. You're going to just annoy the crap out of their best player. If he was legit that explosive, right? So, like, if I, I don't know. Like, they can project these times. But then, like I said, did they ever run track? That's like the that's the legit barrier. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are some NBA guys that have like state track records. But right. um, I think NFL has a lot more of those. I'm gonna try to look it up some stats. Um, because I know the 40-yard time, 40-yard dash time is what something that some of the ones do, but that's not like Olympic level athleticism. Because even like someone like Michael Phelps too, like you have to throw him in there. He was doing so many different like swimming strokes. It wasn't like he was a one-trick pony. Where it's like, oh, he only does a breaststroke, right? He's winning everything, and you have to be an extreme athlete to be able to do that. Like Jesse Owens, like he's running, he's like doing a bunch of different track stuff. Um, but what else? Like Jacoby Ford ran track, they said. Um, he might have been one of the fastest ones. But honestly, the majority of those, like the guys that get drafted, and regardless of the sport, it, it's there, there's always a graphic that comes out of how many played multiple sports. So, I mean, it's not a. It's not a shocker. Like there, the argument's always more play multiple sports, be an all-round athlete, and then if if you happen to have a specialization for football or for basketball, you do your thing, but don't pigeonhole yourself into one thing or another because developing as an all-round athlete gives you just more options across the board. I mean, you you see different times where with baseball players, like they play multiple sports. They're not just specializing in year round baseball. Well, yeah. Cause you have to stay in shape for baseball. You're just kind of standing around. It's like, all right, we're going to do <laughs> <laughs> hanging out. Um, just sitting out there. Uh, which is another thing I was going to bring up. I ended up going into a minor league baseball game and major league baseball. I didn't realize this at first. But there's a sparse crowd at the game. They invited me down on the field, you know, as a big time podcast host. They're like, let's get this guy down here. Let's, let's talk uh, some game with them. So Major League Baseball apparently started to buy out all the minor league owners. So Major League Baseball now owns all these stadiums. And they're making them like so corporate that they want the towns to invest millions of dollars to update the infrastructure and I thought, man, this stadium is actually pretty nice. Like, why would they want you to update? Like, what do they want you to do? And the guy's like, we're not even close to hitting max capacity on my, most games. So, like, we don't know what, like, their MLB is going to take a hit for some of these minor league. Like, this, they ended up as being, like, I think and they took it from double A down to single A, which I didn't realize. Uh, one of the Carolina team down here, the Mudcats. And now they're going to be moving them 20 miles east, they think, in two years. To hit that Major League Baseball, like, new stadium type funding. Because the city of, like, Raleigh or Zebulon, wherever it is now, like, they don't want to pay. The stadium's fine. They're not getting max attendance. (coughs) Why would they pay for more upgrades for no reason? And I agree. Like, why would you do that? And so now, one of the things that I always enjoyed growing up, going to different minor league ball clubs... And because you get a cheap game and they get, they invite you down on the field and stuff like that, do other random things, just making it more expensive for who, like who, who's asking for that? <laughs> Cause if the stadium costs more parking's going to cost more concessions are going to cost more. And then you're not going to want to go to the game. The point of having a cheap stadium and having like promos where like, hey, take the kids, take your pet or whatever for free to try to get you in. And then they have like three dollar hot dog night and you're like getting a couple of hot dogs and you can take the family for like 50 bucks or whatever. When that's usually the cost of one ticket to like another game. And now they're going to say like, nah, we want everything to be like a major league baseball, very light 
type system. And they really don't want teams competing with each other. So they've been kind of spreading them around. And I'm like, so there's no like regional rivalries anymore either. Like I think the closest team is like the team in Fayetteville for the Mudcats now. And you're not just like playing all local teams that like you could just drive to any game. So I was very disappointed to hear the direction because I haven't been to a game since like probably COVID, right? Who goes to minor league baseball games? Thorn COVID, no one. But um, that's my other non update. Anything else? Because I know I've just been talking random stuff. I think you want to talk about, I have one more college football thing. So before we get into that, anything you want to talk about NFL or basketball wise or whatever? No, I, th- I think you covered it. It's the offseason, bro. I got to I gotta fill the time. I'm looking to see if they have. The thing is, like, you can throw up on official times. And it's like, well, these basketball guys are super fast. And then it's like, oh, wait. You know who else used to be super fast unofficially? Deion Sanders. Oh, he would have crushed Michael Jordan. Oh, uh, so would have uh, Bo Jackson and Randy Moss. And it's like, oh, okay. So Jordan wouldn't even have been the fastest in this mythical time where he's the fastest NBA guy. <laughs> they, pretend he's the, they pretend he's the fastest, but in, in legit, he's not anywhere near a Bo Jackson. And so, like, you can't tell me Bo Jackson was great and he was strong. You can't tell me that another guy from the NBA can come in and just be Bo Jackson or it would have happened already. It would have happened already. Because people were like, well, in the NBA, you can get a ton more money. I, I maybe I think you get the most money in baseball though, right? Yeah, baseball's like uncapped. You can have translators gambling for you, and nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see they banned that other guy? No. So they banned another guy. I can't remember his name because, of course, it's like inconsequential. So they're like, we got to get, we got to go after some gambling guy. We can't have all this heat on a tawny because, like. Pfft, Bro, that's bad news. So they they if they go after this guy and then they post that he made like whatever it'd be like twenty so many bets against his team and he only hit on four percent of them. Four percent. He lost ninety six or ninety whatever ninety six percent of the time on his gambles. And Major League Baseball just mar- watching him bet on his team and lose. And then they're like, "We got to kick you out of the game, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> you should have hired should have hired a translator should have hired a translator uh, but uh, the last thing I had today James Franklin on the very hot seat scorching hot talking to some people that have connections to the Penn State board there's a real heat to this where James Franklin could be pushed out at the end of the year because of a medical lawsuit against the football team. Now he now there's some heat where Penn State has been in a weird land where they were competing with Ohio State for a while while Michigan was down to try to take over the top of the Big Ten. They win the Big Ten with Saquon Barkley. And now the past like four or five years, Penn State's been number three at best. Actually, I think they've been a pretty consistent number three, if we're being honest. You could say maybe like someone from the West. But Penn State's right there. They're the number three team. Hardball goes to the NFL. This has to be Penn State's year. They have to make the playoffs. It's an expanded playoff. They have to be there. Otherwise, Franklin's been there for 10 years, over 10 years. I can't remember what year... I saw them coach against Brady Hoke. I think that was his first year, 2014. So maybe this is his 11th year, 10th year. I don't know. But hasn't really got to that pinnacle. Has won the Big Ten one time, I think. Has a bad record against Michigan and Ohio State. The Big Ten's expanding. It's going to get tougher. They don't have to play Michigan this year. They have one of the easier schedules. Michigan has one of the toughest ones in the country. So they, they should be able to get a better record than Michigan. Their only, their big tough game is Ohio state. Even if they lose that game, 
they might be able to jump in and be in the Big Ten championship game. Because I don't know how, they don't think the Big Ten has released their tiebreakers. But from what I've been hearing, the lawsuit from a doctor that was successful, he won $5.25 million. He alleged that James Franklin pressured medical staff into making decisions on the players in terms of scholarships. Like, hey, you know, no, we need this guy off scholarship. Say that he can't play or whatever. That's a pretty big deal. And I'm, I'm putting in the records type stuff and how he's not winning. Because this is the ty- type of thing that a school can use to get rid of a coach that they think they can do better than. Right? Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I'm reading it. Penn State knows that they can do better. They know that this could be a new era. Uh, Like a key game, Michigan plays Texas week two. What happens if Michigan beats Texas? Texas is hyped up. They're in the playoffs. They have most of their guys back. They lose some defensive linemen. That was one of their strengths. Michigan's going to come in power run on them. What if Michigan runs all over them and it looks like they're going to be back and then the Big Ten sitting there, and Penn State, they have to be down, right? Because they, they could end up losing to Penn State. They could lose to Oregon. They could lose to, I don't know who's, who even is on all their schedule. But it's getting tougher now. So the 10 wins that Franklin's been able to coast to in the Big Ten East going to be much harder now. So if he starts hitting an 8-win, 9-win ceiling, does he just get fired? Right? Someone else threw out a a really, in comparison, someone put out this other scenario where what if Ryan Day ran the table, lost to Michigan, but won the Big Ten anyway because Michigan didn't make it because their schedule's so tough? Like, let's say they end up beating, like, Penn State again or something. Would he get fired? Because he would be 70-something and nine. Like, if if they bounce from the playoffs, he could be whatever. He could have, like, a ridiculous winning percentage. I don't think there's any way that Ohio State can fire him. I know this year seems like do or die. Huh? There's always a way to fire somebody. They'll begin another controversy. Workout thing, another assistant coach thing. Someone will be like, get Zach Smith in here. Play some orders on Amazon. (laughs) (laughs) We got to get somebody fired. Because, like, at that point, now you're in a new era. And I understand Penn State, where their board's coming from and where some of their boosters probably want to be able to take that next step. But in reality, with the expanded playoffs, we don't know how hard it's going to be for some of these teams that have been ranked right around number 10 to make a run. Right? I mean, in, in years past, it might be tougher now whenever you have an uber-talented team like Alabama where it seemed like you had to beat Bama no matter what to win the championship. Like Michigan still had to beat them last year. Georgia had to beat them even though they lost to them that one year. They had to beat them in the rematch, right? Um, it was only the one year that Georgia won that I don't think they got to play Bama. Then they play LSU, maybe. I don't even know who the hell they played. Um... But it seemed like Alabama had so much talent that either they had to get beat to get to give up the national championship or um, some other random SEC team had to beat them. Now with the expanded playoff, Bama could be there. And I know they have a new coach, so it might not be applicable anymore. Um, but that's the one thing that I'm, I'm waiting for. Penn State, don't use this random situation Because hopefully Franklin's not doing that, right? I would hope that he's not putting players' health, especially for things like scholarships in the NIL era. Like, those really shouldn't matter. I guess it probably would have been pre-NIL. I think this guy was fired a couple years ago, right? Yeah. Because I think they brought in Saquon Barkley, which would have been what? When did he play? 2017 or something? It's been a long time. He's been in the NFL for a while, right? Yeah. So having a guy like that come in, on behalf, I would think that it's kind of an older allegation. And I mean, now why push guys out? The one thing too, like I can throw Michigan in like they're, 
the one guy um, that's in the NFL, he ended up go- transferring to Minnesota, the defensive back. Was it St. Juiced, maybe? Um, can't remember which guy it was. But he, Michigan doctors didn't clear him. And then he blamed Harbaugh as, like, trying to push him out. But, like, obviously, they're not going to take a guy that's an NFL talent and try to get the doctor to not clear him. Right? So you're hoping that a guy doesn't have issues like that. But sometimes the medical staff at different schools might give him the okay. Right? And then who knows? So it's always good to have a second opinion opinion if that was the case where Franklin's kind of be, being on the safer side with some of these guys. But who knows? Um, I, I think it's weird that the guy was able to win his lawsuit for being fired for that. And then now there's heat. It gives him an excuse to get rid of him. I don't want Franklin to get fired. Let's be real. He doesn't seem to be a good in-game coach. So why would you want that gone? In the Big Ten. <laughs> so, um, anything else you want to talk about today? No. I think we pretty much covered the spectrum of stuff. Hopefully the recording went smooth. I'm trying a new system. Um, I did talk about it with the uh, in the live show, but I'm trying to add an extra graphics card, and I'm trying to possibly redo some of my office to try to get better network type stuff for recording some videos and making some highlights and things Um, because we did that for a while i'm hoping i can kind of bring it back with that i've been consolidating our social media accounts i think i closed or at least deactivated the instagram and facebook just because we're getting great download numbers and some of the social media networks are just holding us hostage now saying that they're not going to show our posts unless we pay for ads and I'm not doing that. I'm being honest. So make sure that you subscribe to the show. That's the easiest way to help us. Um, right now for sure. We're going to keep the actual podcasts and we're going to have the videos and stuff on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube as well. Southbound sports. And, um, but the last one I have that I haven't closed yet is Twitter. I'm still trying to do some AB testing. It looks like right now, just sharing links from our personal accounts gets better traction. I get it. It's a brand. A lot of people aren't going to click on the stuff from a sports show they've never heard of. If it's being pushed by a regular guy, they might be more inclined. Um, but I want to really make sure the numbers have a big difference before I end up deactivating that. It doesn't make it easier on us because then we don't have multiple accounts to run. But... Let me know what you think. Um, the show's still going to be out there. Had the subs- uh, set up the newsletter too. You can go um, to Leahy Media and subscribe if you want. Got some comments, bro, through there. People throwing f bombs at us, all kind of crazy stuff because <laughs> of some of our takes. And I will say this: we love any feedback you send us, but at least be specific. I don't know why you're mad. Why are you so mad at me if you can't tell me why? Is it about EA Sports? Use your words. Is it about EA Sports? Is it about making fun of Ohio State? Like, I don't know. Please let me know. Because sometimes, like when Matt made that off comment about John Gruden a couple years ago, that would be one of the things that kind of goes by the wayside, possibly. Never hear from guys again. With the Twitter changes or whatever. But, I would never have known that people would be so, so in love with John Gruden that they wouldn't like Matt talking about him, right? <laughs> or I guess so jealous of him, right? Not really in love with him. It was more of a Tony Dungy angle, I think. Tony Dungy was mad that we liked him as a better Buccaneers coach than himself. We we liked Gruden more than Tony Dungy, and Tony didn't like that. That's all on the show. So thank you. And if there's anything you want us to hit on this summer, we have the Olympics coming up with some other random stuff. Let us know, and we will see you next week. 